This is Bounty, the Atari Ace Podcast. This is an interview episode of Antic, the Atari 8-Bit Podcast. I'm Kevin Savitz. Art Pregg, along with Harry Coons, published three programs with Atari Program Exchange, Mapware, Starware, and Astrology. Harry Coons died in 2005. Mapware first appeared in the fall 1981 APX catalog, where it won second place in the personal interest and development category. With the Mapware programs, you can create a wide variety of high-resolution world maps. Mapware already contains 9,000 pairs of geographic coordinates for locating main landmasses and islands on Earth. These maps are useful for such applications as games and simulations, tracking satellites, pointing amateur radio antennas, and teaching geography and cartography. The program came on two discs and cost $20.95. Starware first appeared in the spring 1982 APX catalog on disc for $17.95. With Starware, you can explore the heavens by way of your Atari home computer. Starware displays the stars on your TV screen. Its 900 star coordinates accurately locate all the constellations in both hemispheres. Astrology first appeared in the summer 1982 catalog a program for creating astrological charts. With astrology, the mysteries of the zodiac, planetary positioning, natal charts, and rising signs will unfold in your very own living room. It costs $22.95. This interview took place on January 30th, 2016. I would like to hear the story of how you created your software for APX. why don't we start before just how you got into computers and, and why you found the Atari and why you're interested in programming? Just kind of tell me the, set me up, the prehistory. Okay. Uh, first, let me say that this was so long ago that it is very, very hazy. And most of the details I, I talk about will be uh, suspect. <laughs> okay. My memory just isn't that good. I understand. But uh, let me say that uh, ever since I was in school, I was uh, playing around with punch cards and Fortran and mainframes and line printers and all that good stuff. And then all of a sudden, along comes a graphic interface. And that was really uh, intriguing to me. But the problem was I had no idea I could program uh, pretty easily in Fortran and APL, but I had no idea how to do graphics programs. So I had to learn C and had to learn uh, assembly language and things like that. Mm -hmm. And I didn't actually have an Atari. Uh, Harry Coons, my partner in crime, he did, and and, uh, he made sure the programs actually worked on the Atari. I was using an old... Well, at the time, it was a brand new. Uh, I think it was an IBM 286. And that was a computer that had lots and lots of storage, up to a megabyte of storage, which was a huge number. But in learning C and and so on, uh, and wanting to do something that was, uh, you know, useful with a graphics interface, I sort of settled on uh, astronomy of one kind or another. That that was pretty straightforward. Uh, We knew how to do it. We knew how the stars moved. We knew the precession of the Earth and all that sort of stuff. Were you too interested in astronomy before this, or was this... I'm I'm sorry? Were you interested in astronomy before this, or did you just pick it because it was... Uh, easy. Well, uh, or... not not in, not in astronomy. Uh, mm-hmm. I I am a physicist. I was uh, educated in physics, but not astronomy. I was much more down to earth. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was pretty easy to pick up. Okay. Uh, and uh, you know, I, I could do things maybe uh, with, that I was educated in, but that's not very graphic. 
on the other hand, if people see the sky and they uh, see stars moving and they see constellations changing, uh, that grabs them. They, they know what they're looking at there. Now, the problem, of course, was that the computers were so small that even um, doing that in a very uh, limited sense would take forever as far as calculating goes, and it just wouldn't work. So that's why I had to use, learn assembly language and you know count the actual cycles for every little operation. And so you know there was a, a lot of detail going on, but eventually uh, it all came together, and uh, I had something working on the 286 and gave it to Harry to put on the Atari, and, and I actually have no idea, no idea how he got it on there. But it seemed to work pretty well. So it, it was uh, really just a matter of something new, a, a shiny new toy, and I wanted to learn how to use it. Wow, so you were, you were developing on a 286, and he was somehow porting it over to his Atari 800. Yeah, so well, you were. Uh, I'm not sure what Atari version he had. Okay, all right. Interesting. In fact, I, I don't believe I... I'm not sure I ever knew. Anyway, I don't know now for sure. Hmm. Wow, so how did you how did you meet him? How did you know each other? Uh, we worked together. Uh, well, we worked in the same lab. Uh, both of us uh, uh, had to do with uh, satellite experiments. Uh, Remember, this was in the 1970s, 1980s, and satellites were a big thing. So we were uh, doing our experiments and flying satellites and analyzing the data. So we were all working together. He was in a different field than I was, but we knew each other. Mm -hmm. where, where were you working? It was a place called the Aerospace Corporation, mm -hmm. which was a nonprofit uh, I, FRDC, federally funded uh, research, uh, FFC, I'm a corporation. I <laughs> okay. Uh, and anyway, uh, uh, we uh, we had uh, uh, functional uh, accountability for the entire military space program. So that's what I was doing. And so we had the computers, we had the big mainframes, we had lots of line printers, all sorts of good stuff, but we didn't have the little toys, like 286s and Ataris. <laughs> and I wanted to play with the toys. Nice. <laughs> nice. So you never, I'm sorry, just you never like went over to his house and like saw the program running on his computer? Uh, not on his computer, no, oh. never saw it. Wow. But he, he told me it worked great. And I know on my computer, the 286, it works great. So uh, I, I assumed, and I shouldn't have, but I did assume that it looked exactly the same on the two machines. Hmm. Did you and worked just as fast. Yeah. yeah. Did you sell the 286 version, or did you only sell the Atari version? Uh, no, this was, this was just a learning experience for us, for both of us. Uh, and then it was Harry that said, uh, look, you, you've got the sky and, and the stars and how they change. Uh, what People aren't really interested in astronomy. They're interested in astrology. And we've got all the pieces here. Let's put it together and make an astrology program too. So it's the same program. It's just a different emphasis. Hmm. And as a, I don't know, you seem like a science-y guy. Did it rub you weird at all to, to get into the astrology side of things? <laughs> well, what we were doing, remember, the idea wasn't, uh, at least initially, well, my idea never was to sell it at all. The, the idea was to just see what we could do with the toy. Right. So, you know, uh, that, that's also an interesting thing about, uh, I guess, science in general. You might start out doing something and doing it for one reason and doing it for another reason, and then it turns out when things actually work, it has an enormous number of applications, mm -hmm. stuff that you never even thought of. Hmm. But it's all based on the same same calculations. Sure. 
So you guys ended up doing Mapware, and that I'm was sorry? you did the a program called Mapware, which was um, fall 1981. Uh, we haven't really talked about that. I think that was more of a mapping application. You know, I don't even remember that. Hmm. Uh, that was before GPS. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, it was before uh, uh, much GPS. Actually, uh, we were just launching those satellites at about that time. But anyway, that's a whole other story. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I know uh, that that was a, a much easier one. That uh, must have been, and I'm guessing now, must have been my first attempt to learn C. So, uh, but, uh, you know, once that was done, I wanted to go on to bigger and better things. And I'm really interpolating here. I think that's what happened, but I'm not going to guarantee it. Sure. No, no well, one's, uh, you're not in court, you know. <laughs> Don't need to swear. This is all accurate. It's just your memory. We always, yeah. We no, I'm, I'm trying to remember, but uh, I, I have to keep saying <laughs> Don't take my word for it. So yeah, the the mapware and then the astro the, the starware and then the astrology and then I think there was a family tree program that you guys did. No, no, that, uh, I didn't have anything to do with that. Hmm. No, that that was all as far as the Atari went. Okay. Uh, and then about that time, a 386 came out, and <laughs> I uh, on my own started doing uh, fancier kinds of Star Wars stuff. And at that time, unfortunately, Harry got very sick, so uh, we just sort of lost touch. Yeah. So that that's all I have to say. <laughs> that's the whole story. Okay, that's great. I'm happy to have talked to you and gotten the story. Um, uh, that's awesome. Do you do you remember if you, you guys made any any money from from selling the Atari version? Was it pocket uh, I, change or was it? I I, I don't remember. If I were to guess, I would say not a penny, <laughs> but I don't remember. All right. Good. And uh, in fact, you know, we uh, we didn't do it for money. We did it for, uh, well, as I say before, uh, we found a shiny new object and we wanted to investigate. Nice. Tell me what you do today. I'm retired, so I do as little as possible. Nice. You have the story, and that's about all I have to say. Thank you, and I really appreciate your time, and uh, I I really appreciate getting your story tonight. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, good night. Good night. If you enjoyed these interviews and would like to contribute something, I encourage you instead to donate to one of our favorite organizations, the Internet Archive, at archive.org. The Internet Archive is a nonprofit digital library with the stated mission of universal access to all knowledge. They've done incredible things to preserve computer history, including hosting thousands of programs in an in-browser Atari emulator, creating the Wayback Machine, and offering full-page scans of countless Atari computer books and magazines. Make your tax-deductible contribution at archive.org donate.